It's over. It's finally over. The end to Masters of the Air is finally here and we can all take stock on what has been a long two months. Releasing on the 26th of January, Australia Day, I was very optimistic about the prospect of a new series from the producers of Band of Brothers and The Pacific. Two episodes in and things were looking good, but it's been an up and down road since then. My major gripe has been the lack of real characterization for any of the, um, characters. I know, it's based on real people, and they're not made up characters, but I feel the show didn't give us any reason to really care beyond simple human compassion and rooting for the good guys. Ask me to describe any of these people, and my answer is going to be stolen from the prisoner of war interrogation scenes. Name, rank, and serial number. Unfortunately, episode 9 of Masters of the Air is just good. It's not great, it's also not just okay, it's good. Honestly, it's worth a 7 out of 10, which pretty much sums up the entire series. They're still introducing new characters in this final episode and then killing them off and expecting a reaction. It's not going to happen. Then heady issues like the Holocaust are brought up, but then quickly forgotten about. The Tuskegee Airmen that were introduced last episode may as well not be there. They finally experience blatant racism at the hands of a German guard, but it's still pretty tame. After the liberation, they don't even get a scene of them returning to their unit. Nothing until the obligatory, where are they now, slideshow. Captain Westgate isn't even mentioned in the entire final episode. After appearing in multiple episodes for no apparent reason, they reveal that she's a member of the Special Operations Executive, and last episode, they showed her on two missions, going into a third. In this episode, she's completely forgotten. Not even mentioned in passing. Not shown in the montage at the end. Was she even a real person? The ending basically focuses on Rosenthal, Buck, Bucky and Crosby. Not a single mention of Quinn or Bailey, nothing about Chick or any of the other leaders of the unit. The music did its best to try and pull a tear from my eye, but it failed due to the lack of attachment to these characters. I just don't care about them beyond the basic minimum level of empathy for a fellow human being. And I should feel more than that. These men and women risked everything they had for our benefit, willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. They went through things that I could never even imagine, but the show did not do a good enough job of showing these things. It made World War II feel more like an old John Wayne movie where the bad guy gets what's coming to him and the good guy gets the girl. Thankfully, there's an actually brilliant historical drama on TV at the moment called Shogun. I suggest you watch that next. Here's a playlist of my reviews in the top right corner. That show makes you care about the people and their motives. Make sure to subscribe so you can join us for the remaining six episodes of Shogun. Now on to the spoilers. The final episode of Masters of the Air opens with Rosie's plane going down so deep over the enemy lines that they have to hold the plane in the sky long enough to get to the Russian front on the other side of Berlin. This should have been a nail-biting experience, but some shonky CGI really let the team down. It looked terrible as Rosenthal was hanging out of the plane, also the parachuting looked really cheap and tacky. He's supposed to have broken his right arm, but he uses that hand to take his cap off. Luckily, he lands close enough to the Russians that he can surrender to their care. Back at Stalag Luft 3 and the Allies are close enough that the Germans are shutting down the camp and marching everyone deeper into Germany. It would be easy to complain about the lack of actual fighting considering the preparations that were described last episode, but it's better to be prepared and not need it than the opposite. Poor Goldtooth. He's trying to get a feed before they leave on their march, and Bucky tells him he wouldn't do that if he was him. Doesn't tell him why. I think Gold is perfectly sensible to grab some food. He didn't know the Germans had tainted the food. Here we get the one blatant racism against the Tuskegee. One of the Germans calls them black scum. Totally shoehorned in. So Gold Tooth starts vomiting on the side of the road. What was the point of this entire sequence? To show that Gold Tooth got his comeuppance for giving Jefferson the side eye last episode? Or to make Bucky look like the greatest leader in the world? I don't know what the point of the scene with the locked storage room is either. Are they trying to make him look like a scumbag and Crosby look like a great leader and not just an adulterer? They show the Yanks to be compassionate to their captors. I was thinking that when the German fella fell to his knees, 
and this Solomon, when he went up to help the German up, I thought he'd get shot, thinking he was attacking him. We get a couple of shots in a brickwork, then onto a train, straight to Nuremberg. Then march straight to Stalag 13. I knew we'd get a Hogan's Heroes reference in here somewhere. Buck bumps into George Nighthammer. We get his life story, so it's pretty clear he's a dead man. Rosenthal has the unfortunate distinction of being the first man in history to discover the Holocaust. It's a bit weird because he just walks around looking at all the burnt bodies until he finds some scratch writing on the walls. It looks like a menorah. Thankfully, the Russian tells him that they were one of many camps of people who were already killed and burned. Mostly Jewish. Uh oh, topical. The Jews are going to Palestine. I'm sure that'll work out great. And just like that, Rosenthal's on a plane back to England. Who's this guy? He just appeared out of nowhere. Ever get the feeling this was meant to be a 10 episode season? Buck and two new randos make a run for it, but Bucky gets stopped by the Germans. We get another weird shot. This time of Buck and the two randos staring at an abandoned white horse. Reminiscent of the final episodes of Game of Thrones where the white horse was loose in the city. Surely not a hackneyed reference to the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Nighthammer stops for a leak and the other two have decided to have a nap as they allow a baby-faced German soldier to sneak up on them and bayonet him in the back. Is this the age-old problem of something being out of frame, therefore it no longer exists? No, not George. I'm annoyed that they didn't take the guns, even with no ammo. They could still bail someone up, maybe take ammo from a corpse later on. And the bayonet is better than nothing. They're still going to be shot as spies. Rosenthal made it back to England and Crosby's wife is pregnant. Crosby can't even recognize himself in the mirror. Is he expecting to see Clark Gable? So did Rosenthal not tell anyone about the horrors he witnessed in Poland? Buck made it into the arms of the American army. The march continues to Starlag 7, where there's soldiers of every race, nationality and creed. Buck then returns to England and is shown the new mission of dropping food parcels to the Dutch. The mill drops go well and Bucky's there when they get back. I did get a bit misty eyed hearing the broadcast from Winston Churchill. Imagine the feeling of relief after the war is finally over. It would have been an amazing time. We even get a shot of Helen and the Red Cross Coffee and Donut Girls. And after a brief period of partying, they are out of here. I assume some of them probably went on to the Pacific Theatre and some stayed behind to help with the reconstruction or flying wounded back. But the war's finally over. And so's Masters of the Air. Like I said earlier, and I've been saying this all along, this show had pacing issues and glosses over too many important things while taking time out to show unrelated, meaningless things. No ending for Captain Westgate. No paying respects to those they lost. No homecoming for the Tuskegee Airmen. The final episode of Masters of the Air gets a 7 from me. As per the theme of this entire series of reviews, it's good, not great. Not okay, good. This episode felt like it had a whole checklist of things that it had to touch on, and it didn't care how it got there. The more I talk about it, the more I feel myself drifting down to an okay. But I'll leave it as a 7. The sets, the costumes, the acting were all really good. It's just that we need more time to get to know these guys and we seem to have too many threads loose at once. So we end up bouncing around, touching on things, or only arriving in time for the aftermath. As for the series itself, as for the series itself, let's recap the scores from episode 1 through to episode 9. 8 7 6 7 8 7 6 6 7 Overall, 7. It's good, not great. Not just okay, good. Too few episodes, too many men, too little emotional attachment. Too many issues touched upon but never explored. The issue of race, among the Americans and with the Jews in the camps. Raised, touched on, but never really shown or discussed at length. Almost like they were afraid to broach the subject. Too many digs at the British. It probably played well to an American audience, but it just felt like they were put down for no apparent reason. Was that in the books? They made the German camp guards more sympathetic than the British, particularly the men. 
Mental health was touched on and then abandoned. I guess they were real men back then and didn't need to talk about that stuff. I will always defend the acting, the sets, the costumes. They were all very well done and could get some awards. There were some issues with wonky VFX, but I can overlook them for the most part. They're just fun to compare with other productions. <laughs> Shogun. <laughs> like I said before, I think the issue is with the writing, directing and editing. I understand that it was impacted by COVID, so I can see why it would have been hard to produce. But it doesn't change the fact that it could have and should have been made better. Unfortunately, it's all over now, and so it has to stand as it is. I have little doubt it will be among my most disappointing of 2024. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time, and have a good one.